the Tibetan bowls have been in Tibet since before Buddhism arrived, more than 1,200 years. And unlike most of the rest of the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, they have not had much written about them. In fact, hardly anything at all. So most of us in the West who play the bowls uh, or work with them have kind of had to find our own way of how to do it. And that's what I did when people say, how do you do it? I say, hmm, I get pre as present as I can and get out of the way because the bowls actually know what they're doing, which is more than I can say for myself. But I would like to show you the things they have taught me about simple ways of handling them. Now, as you can see from this collection, the bowls come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. And when you go to the uh, pick out a bowl of your own, one of the things I'd like to tell you is that the wide shallow bowls, which are new, which are currently available, are quite hard to sing compared to the deeper shapes. So you'll notice that most of my bowls have one or another of the deeper shapes. I'm going to start with the very largest one because it makes a wonderful sound and because it's fun to play and because you can see what I'm doing. This bowl is a, a large older bowl. It has a tone uh, in the general range of D uh, or the second chakra. The thing about the Tibetan bowls is they came along long before the Western uh, a sound system did, so many of them are not musically well tuned to the C, D, E, F, G, A, B scale that the West uses. So we just get close, and if you ask for a bowl that is a D, you may get anything from pretty much C sharp all the way to E flat. Uh, this one's fairly close in the middle of the range. How do you hold your bowl? With a big bowl, it's pretty simple because you can't get your hands up around it. When you pick up a littler bowl, especially when you're starting and you're afraid it's going to fall off your hand, there's a tendency to roll your fingers and thumb around it, which keeps it from singing. So if you're going to use a small bowl, you want to put it on the flat of your hand and use just your thumb, or I often use, and I'll turn my hand around so you can see it, my fingertips, and you see how it doesn't uh, come up the side of the bowl and helps the bowl to be more able to sing. With the larger bowls, especially if you're going to play them for a longer period of time, you may want to put the bowl on your hand in your holding position, whatever that is, and then put your hand on your knee or the table. Those are all okay. Some folks hold them and tilt them a little bit. Um, that's okay if you don't push them off your hand. Um, the uh, Anyway, in my usual position with the larger bowls, just like this, fingertip hold on the knee. The next thing is there's a lot of ways that people hold the sticks and you'll see many folks just like they were trying to beat a cake. This is not a cake. Think about the energy coming from your heart, through your arm, through your shoulder, through your hand, through the stick, into the very center of the bowl. I hold mine like a paintbrush or pencil. Easier to hold, easier to control, and it seems like the bowls like it better. Often you'll see people strike the bowl or gong it before they start, and that's fine, and many bowls like it. Others just start to talk to them and they will begin to sing to you. If you get a chattery noise, like that. I have to make it on purpose now, but you'll find it does it not on purpose sometimes. It's the bowl inviting you to slow down a little bit, focus a little more, and direct your energy more strongly toward the middle of the bowl. In the Buddhist tradition, when you encircle the bowl in a clockwise fashion, you send the blessing to all beings everywhere, which of course includes yourself. 
in the Buddhist tradition, when you're working with a bowl for your own healing, the, your energy use, you circle it in a counterclockwise or anti-clockwise motion. Most often, folks use clockwise. You heard that little chatter when I started it up. That's because it was already vibrating. You can feel the vibration in the bowl all the way down your arm and into the torso even before you start to hear the song. One of the things that I remind people is that we have this amazing belief that we hear with our ears. The truth is that you hear with your whole body and the organizing energy of the bowls will really literally penetrate to the marrow of your bones. Enjoy it with your whole body, your mind, your heart, your gut, your bones, and let that organize, heal, and refresh all the energy that flows in you. Now, 